The following is a clip from World Class Bullshitter's Good Morning Pop Culture Radio Show, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, every day, here on the channel. If Adventure has a name, it must be Indiana Jones. And if you want a good picture of him, well, this is probably one of the most iconic shots of Dr. Jones ever. So take a look at the screen. Since he escaped my basement and he's back to live his own life, here's our buddy, Dr. Henry Indiana Jones Jr. But the reason you're looking at this picture of Indiana Jones is because Indiana Jones Land is reportedly being considered at Disney World. Woo! Let's, let's check out this information. An Indiana Jones mini land may open in Walt Disney World in Orlando. The House of Mouse surprised the acquisition of Lucasfilm in 2012 brought in a new era for Star Wars content. But as most viewers know, the galaxy far, far away isn't the only notable franchise under the studio's belt. Lucasfilm is also home to the highly successful Indiana Jones series, which has spawned four blockbuster films since Raiders of the Lost Ark debuted in 1981. There have been problems getting the fifth installment off the ground, but the current plan is for it to hit theaters in 2021. Of course, Disney usually has ideas much larger than movies for their prized possessions. Next year, we're going to see the long-awaited Galaxy's Edge theme park for Star Wars. Obviously, much of the company's focus has been on completing the construction of these attractions, but they may have been brainstorming an idea for Indiana Jones, and now they could have something. According to Orlando Weekly, Disney is currently considering constructing a mini Indiana Jones Land Disney World Hollywood Studios theme park where Galaxy Edges will be. The current proposal would have it take up eight acres and replace the Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular attraction. It is unknown whether rides would be included, but Disney would like dining locations and gift shops. If it gets off the ground, it would be the latest example of Disney synergy in action. An Indiana Jones land wouldn't open for businesses until sometime in 2020, most likely after the new movie has completed its theatrical run. Indiana Jones 5 will be a hit meaning Disney Parks would be able to capitalize on the property's new wave of popularity. The franchise will have always been a special place in viewers' hearts, but there's something to be said about appealing to the next generation of fans. Considering Indy 5 is the return to form many hope it will be, people of all ages will be excited for an indie based theme park attraction, upping the attendance and generating more revenue. Okay, so l there we go. I keep telling you guys how much I love Indiana Jones, but I have inherently have a problem with this. So first off, an Indiana Jones land. So we're going to do a theme park based on a movie franchise that came out almost 40 years ago at that point, which is still relevant. See, Star Wars has, you know, the advantage of taking place in a galaxy far, far away. Spaceships, speeders, TIE fighters, Death Stars, all kinds of crazy, outlandish, fake things that were brought into the world. Indiana Jones takes place in deserts and jungles, real places, places you can go visit. So there is a thing called Indiana Jones Land Disney. It's called the real world. Maybe certain sets were built, like the temple in the first movie. But he does go to Hawaii. That's where they filmed those sh that shit. So go there. Oh, go to Egypt. Oh, do this. So Disney's Indiana Jones land sounds dumb. As much as I love Indiana Jones, as much as we're going to do Indiana Jones content in November, thanks to our friend American Trent 007, I don't foresee this being a successful or smart thing. It seems cool, but Indiana Jones is a character from the 80s where, you know, men can be men and kick ass and do stuff. Indiana Jones was very neutered in 2008, and Indiana Jones in 2021 will be turned into, I don't know, a attack helicopter with a sexual preference for blueberries. The character doesn't need to be out again. Jonathan Kasdan, Lawrence Kasdan, Frank Marshall, all these people that are involved with the new production of this next Indiana Jones film don't have it anymore. You know, today's world is so afraid to talk about religion in their films because they don't want to offend, they don't want to cut, uh, cut, their se cut themselves off from a potential bigger market out in the real world. But Indiana Jones has inherently always been about religious artifacts, be them the Ark of the Covenant or the uh, Holy Grail, the Cup of Christ. So those are two Christian Catholic. Or you go to the Shankara Stones and Hindu religion with Shiva and Ganesh and all those other Indian Hindu beliefs. So nowadays we live in a world where everyone wants to dump on the Temple of Doom. It's culturally insensitive. It's stupid. It's sexist. You know what? Fuck everybody that says that. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is a great movie. It's got tons of action, suspense, horror, a great payoff at the end. I love Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Hell, the trilogy is perfect. I wouldn't change a single frame of anything about any of those flicks. The fourth one can go fuck itself, but those three are perfect. Because of the snowflake riddled world we live in today where everybody on the internet seems to have power over a movie studio, we're not going to get a good Indiana Jones flick. I mean, people's heads would explode. 
faces would melt. Remember in the third one where he pulls out the Luger and shoots the Nazis and they all go and they all fall and he just looks at the gun? You're not going to get any of that stuff. Oh, that's too violent. Oh, it's culturally insensitive to show that they were Nazis in the past. Indiana Jones, much like a Back to the Future, much like other properties, don't need any more things like Ghostbusters. They were relics of their time. They were perfect. They have stood the test of time. But when you try to modernize them and update them, you ruin them. I love Harrison Ford. He's my favorite actor, but he's too past the expiration date for him to play Indiana Jones. He looks great. We know that. We've seen him run around in The Force Awakens. I still believe if you put some of that tightening makeup on his face, make his hair a little darker, I could buy that it takes place in the 1940s and he's just slightly older. Overall, I just don't think Indiana Jones needs to be a property that's touched. If they really want to try something, put out an Indiana Jones Black Series figure as a chase figure in the Star Wars Black Series line. That'll be the most highly sought after toy of the decade. You know, a couple years ago, there were these little things called uh, Kubrick figures. They're like these little, they were like mini mates. And they had a Star Wars line. And there was a chase figure of Indiana Jones and people went nuts for it for years. It was like the most in-demand chase figure of all time. Do that nowadays with today's face printing technology and all the accessories and stuff that they produce for Star Wars. Throw out an Indiana Jones figure. You know, get a feeling in the room to see what the crowd, what the audience wants in terms of Indiana Jones. I'll take a 4K Blu-ray release, a theatrical re-release, which I did go see in 2012. I went and saw, no, 2011. I went and saw the 30th anniversary of Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was fantastic. Great movie. Do something like that. Get Harrison Ford on Inside the Actors Studio, something along those lines. It's a character of the past. They won't allow certain things. You know, Indiana Jones was dark at times, fun at others. But I really believe the religious implications that go with his character will not allow them to fully develop because you have this asshole like John Kasdan who's so progressive in quotation marks. You know, Lando's got to bang his toaster. Well, Indiana Jones is going to now be an atheist or some crap like that. Indiana Jones, that story won't work with his upbringing and the, his um, evolution of a character. Even in the first one, when he didn't have his father's backstory, people have said historically that Indiana Jones is the story of an atheist finding God. You know, listen to how he talks in the first one. That's the story my mother used to tell me to frighten me as a child, stuff like that. But then he gets faith by the end of the movie. Don't look at it, Marion. Closes his eyes. He survives. They're going to take away all of those amazing elements for the character of Indiana Jones just to be progressive and woke in a 2018 or a 2020 or 21 setting. And the world's not going to switch back to the way it used to be by 2021, sadly. You know, it's probably going to get shittier for a while, and then it'll even out, and then those people will go away because... Somebody will come out publicly, hopefully it's me, and say, look, you ruined this movie, you ruined that movie, keep your stupid beliefs in your pocket and shut up. So that is why I am not excited over anything Indiana Jones knew. 